video is a follow-up to one we produced previously explaining how to calculate required belt pool and how to calculate required belt power to move discrete packages on a horizontal slider bed conveyor. In this uh, video, we will describe how to calculate belt pool required to overcome friction and gravity if that same slider bed is on an inclined plane. We know that belt pool times belt speed equals required power. So what we're doing right now is learning how to calculate required belt pool. Belt pool on an inclined plane conveyor consists of two main components. One component is the pool required to overcome friction, and the other pool component is the one required to overcome gravity. We'll take each in turn. To calculate the amount of pull required to overcome friction, we take the weight of the total load on the belt plus the weight of the belt and multiply that against the frictional coefficient between the bottom of the belt and the top of the slider bed. So in this example of a 10 foot long conveyor with a three foot change in elevation moving at 50 feet per minute, we can calculate the pull required to overcome friction like this. Five packages times 50 pounds per package equals a total weight of the load on the belt of 250 pounds. If the belt weight is three pounds per foot, then we have the length of 10 feet, which we multiply against three pounds per foot to come up with 30 pounds. 250 plus 30 times 0.5 gives us a required belt pool of 140 pounds. One hundred and forty pounds. Now let's calculate the required belt pull to overcome gravity. The pull required to overcome gravity equals the weight per foot of the load on the belt multiplied by the change in elevation of the conveyor. So we have 250 pounds total over a 10 foot length. 250 divided by 10 is 25 pounds per foot. We multiply that against the change in elevation of three feet three times 25 is 75. Pull required to overcome friction is 140 pounds. Pull required to overcome gravity is 75 pounds. So we now know that required belt pull to overcome friction equals 140 pounds. And the belt pull required to overcome gravity is 75 pounds. Adding those two numbers together, we get a total required belt pull of 215 pounds, 215 pounds. Now we need to take this and convert this into the amount of power required to drive this conveyor. Now that we know required belt pull, we can determine the amount of power required to drive this conveyor belt. We know total belt pull requirement is 215 pounds. We know the belt speed is 50 feet per minute. The product of these two numbers is 10,750 foot-pounds per minute. Belt pull times belt speed equals required power. Now we need to convert this to a useful unit of measure. We know in imperial units that one horsepower equals 33,000 foot-pounds per minute. So to convert this to a useful unit of measure, we simply divide 10,750 foot-pounds per minute by 33,000, and we come up with a power requirement of 0.33 horsepower, 0.33 horsepower. For those of you that have seen the first video in which we described how to calculate pull and power on a horizontal conveyor, you may remember that the power requirement was 0.2 horsepower. All things were kept the same except that we made an inclination of three feet and we determined that the power required with the inclined conveyor is 0.33 instead of 0.2. And that means that the increase in power because of the extra pull required to overcome gravity is more than 50%. The increase in power is more than 50%. That increase in power underlines the fact that it's very important to remember to include gravity as well as friction when calculating required belt pull and belt power on an inclined plane conveyor.
We hope you found this short tutorial useful. For more information on conveyor drive design tips and maintenance tips, go to our YouTube channel or go to romecacorp.com. Thank you very much.